We mentioned in the previous lecture that the theta of an option is not static. One variable that has a major influence on theta is the underlying asset price, and where it currently is relative to the strike price of each option. Let's take a look at multiple options that share the same underlying asset price, days to expiry, and implied volatility. The only difference between these options is of course the strike price, and therefore where they sit relative to the underlying asset price. This chart shows the theta for all options of a fictional asset with a current price of $100, 30 days to expiry, and implied volatility of 40%. The strikes range from $50 to $150. I've chosen to only show the call values here, because with interest and dividend rates both set to zero, the theta will be equal for the put and the call at each strike price. It's worth also mentioning briefly that interest rates and dividends can shift the curve of theta for puts and calls. However, as both interest rates and dividends are assumed to be zero on Deribit, we will not spend time covering this in any detail. If you wish to model this effect for yourself, this black shoal script for Excel will allow you to do this with ease, and you can find this script on this blog. The underlying price here is $100, and as you can see, this is where theta is greatest. This means the at the money call option with a strike price of $100 will lose more value over the next 24 hours than, for example, the in-the-money $90 call or the out-of-the-money $110 call. If we move further away from the current underlying price, this trend continues, with the $80 call having a smaller theta than the $90 call, and the $120 call having smaller theta than the $110 call. More generally, theta is greatest for at-the-money options and then reduces the further away from the current underlying price the strike price is. This stands to reason because extrinsic value is greatest for at-the-money options, so they have the most value to lose. Theta is an erosion of extrinsic value by the passage of time, and at expiration all extrinsic value must be gone. So assuming all options with the same expiry date, the options with more extrinsic value to lose, at-the-money options, will lose more dollars over a given time period than options with less extrinsic value to lose, in the money and out of the money options. Notice that we are specifically talking about extrinsic value here, not the total option price, which also includes intrinsic value. This is because time has no effect on the intrinsic value of an option, intrinsic value just being a reflection of how far in the money the option is. So an in the money option will have a higher total price than an out of the money option, However, part of this higher total will come from its intrinsic value, which does not erode as time passes. This is why both out-of-the-money and in-the-money options have a smaller theta than the at-the-money option, because they are only losing the extrinsic portion of their value as time passes. In summary, where the strike price of an option is in relation to the underlying price will have an impact on the theta of that option. At the money options have the most extrinsic value to lose, and so will have the greatest amount of theta. That is, they will lose the most value over the next 24 hours, assuming all else remains stable. As we move away from the current underlying price in either direction, both in the money and out of the money options will have smaller theta than the at the money options of the same expiry.